Hi, I'm Trantor. Today, we're going to go through Aura Finance, and I want to take a look at not only how Aura Finance works, what's going on with the balance of token, but also provide some updates on what I think is going on in particular with this protocol, and importantly, where I think things are headed. Importantly, this video is not purely about shilling this particular token, it's about providing an assessment of where we are now and what's going on across the broader ecosystem. If you like this content or you like Aura Finance, then please leave a subscription or a like or a comment down below. And just remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. First thing we're going to do is start with actually Aura Finance app itself. So if you go to Aura.Finance, this is the page it will take you to. It gives you an indication of what's going on, particularly the amount of Aura currently locked, the VBAL share currently sitting at 28% and the TVL total value locked. Before I do a deep dive into the actual intricacies of where Aura is at at the moment, we need to explain what's going on. So Aura Finance is a yield aggregator, much like Convex was to Curve, in this instance for a different AMM, and that is Balancer. Balancer essentially provides an ETF tile structure in terms of liquidity pools rather than a straight AMM. The way Balancer tokens, uh, sorry, the way Balancer protocol primarily works is based on a couple of different things. The first is they have these investment pools. This is where you provide standard liquidity, and there's many, many, many different tokens here, as you can see, in different pairs. You can go through that full list later. Each one of these different pairs and pools has an API, and you can hover over it on the actual app site, the website itself, sorry, to get an indication. Where this becomes a little bit more interesting is if you go across to VBAL. VBAL is Vote Escrowed Balancer Tokens. Now, importantly, the entirety of the Balancer ecosystem is governed by these Balancer Tokens. But if you actually want to have this governance and voting power, you need to lock it and mint it. All right, so to mint it, you're essentially pooling it in what's called this, in this particular pool here, into an 80-20 pool. That is, it's 80% made up of Balancer and 20% made up of ETH. Once you've done that, you've created this 80 bal 80 bal 20 wef you basically have minted a VBAL token. So this is kind of the flow. Importantly, it's this VBAL, which you lock for a certain period of time, which you then use to vote on specific pools. These pools, these are pools eligible for liquidity mining, or these pools that have a gauge vote. And in this instance, there's different pools here. Each one of these can be voted on with a certain percentage and that emits rewards those staking rewards are further balancer tokens. So in other words, if you want to earn balancer tokens for staking and you, you need to put in one of these pools and in particular voting on that, up, including there's some uh, boost opportunities for those who do it, is achieved this way. If you look at these pools at the moment, it gives you a percentage of what's actually available. And what's most interesting at the moment is what's going on here with this wrapped Bitcoin dig Graviora pool. So this is a recently approved uh, pool, 40-40-20. Uh, and essentially, currently, it's capturing 30.74% of the entirety of the pool. That is the entirety of all votes. The wrapped staked ETH and wrapped ETH pool is also capturing 19.6% of total votes. And then down here, this third pool, BBA USDT. So this is essentially balancer boosted, Aave USDT. Same again for DAI and USDC. In other words, this is a uh, stable coin pool. is currently capturing 6.63% of the total. If you click across to the highest yeah, yielding token, uh, pooling at the moment. This is the DIG uh, wrapped Bitcoin uh, Graviora pool. You'll note that here on Balancer, individuals who deposit or invest into this particular pool can earn an APR of between 155% up to 380% if you have a maximum sort of um, you know, VBAL percentages to achieve your voting. Now, individuals can rarely get that level of percentage, but on Aura, of course, that's where, where uh, governance is pooled and you get that social aggregation, aggregation sorry, that is much more likely. If we head back over to the VBAL pools at the moment, what's actually available for liquidity, there's a number of different pools here that are capturing fairly high percentages, but the largest is not surprisingly this smaller token pool here, uh, which captures DIG and Graviora. Now, if you head back across to Aura Finance, what you'll have a look at here is as you open up the actual app, you'll see that each one of the different pools here, in other words, these pools that are eligible for liquidity mining, are then brought across to Aura Finance. Now, if you go to Aura Finance here, you can see under the stake aspect, you go down here, stake balance LP tokens, and it goes through and provides you all those balancer pools that are eligible for this vote. Now, if you click across to APRs here, you can see again what's going on. And to provide you a bit of an update, these are some of the pools with some of the highest percentages based on what's being earned in terms of not only the Aura pools, but also balancer. So you'll note some of these have a lower balancer amount, but a much greater aspect in terms of Aura. Now, you'll look at this first uh, block here, you'll see cream. Cream and ETH was a pool that was originally, uh, you know, some time ago, but essentially was controlled by a single whale. Now, this whale was voting extensive uh, VBAL essentially towards uh, this particular pool, which is why it had such an incredibly high percentages. So its current APR is 317. 
Noting, however, that it's had now receiving almost no votes, it's back down to 1.97%. And the reason for that is that Balancer, realizing this was essentially a governance uh, sort of you know, manipulation of governance, basically voted to kill that particular gauge. And that's why the cream gauge is currently being uh, removed, I suppose, and uh, you might say, and its APR is decreasing so thoroughly. If you go down the rest of the list here, you can see all the different APRs and uh, projected APRs as those sort of seek to play out. Of particular note, you'll notice some of these other different protocols here. So DFX, uh, essentially, this is a stable pool, a DeFi platform. Uh, Paladin, same again. The Aurabal Gravi Aura Wrapped ETH, uh, this is an ecosystem type um, uh, pool itself, in particular, focusing on Gravi Aura and auto voting. You've got uh, WNCG, which is a gaming token. Uh, the 50 wrapped ETH, a uh, 50 aura pool, uh, wrapped Bitcoin and Badger pools. You can see all these different pools. The reason I'm going through this is just by looking at these pools, you get an understanding of what's going on. So primarily the DFX and PAL are really focused on incentivizing votes for their particular tokens. This provides them quite small pools, as you can see here, a little bit more exposure to what's going on with them as actual protocols. If you look at Badger and uh, essentially what they're doing, so Badger currently controls or at least created this pool here, this pool here and this pool here. These are all focused on Badger type products. And this goes to show the actual power that Badger has within this ecosystem at the moment to build their own sustainable liquidity. And you also notice these pools are, are greatly increasing. It's this pool here, this wrapped Bitcoin D Gravy Aura pool that's very interesting. Now at the moment, it appears to be a similar type of uh, you know governance exploit to what happened with Cream. And in particular, you'll notice the DIG token has gone from a value of around 3,500 to approximately 13,000 over the last sort of two weeks. The reason for this incredible jump is what's actually happening with DIG. So DIG as a token itself used to be a pegged version of, um, what do you call it? A, a pegged version to, pegged to Bitcoin. It lost peg as it started to remove rebasing. It is no longer a pegged asset. It's now primarily a boost uh, aggregation asset on Balancer. Sorry, on, uh, on Badger. What's particularly interesting now about this whole opportunity here is even though it looks a little bit interesting now, you've actually got a DAO in terms of Badger DAO who are firmly aligned with Balancer and are seeking a long-term viability. So even though that whale, which removed all of the liquidity from Cream and has now and bought up a whole bunch of DIG and voting on that, even though that appears to be something that's going to cause damage to the Balancer ecosystem in the long run, what it's more likely to do is continue to drive greater interest, greater value to one of the bigger players in Balancer, and it may actually provide some type of serious yield opportunity for those who are willing to deposit their wrapped Bitcoin in large percentages. So this is quite an interesting pool, uh, very experimental at this stage, but interesting to see how it develops. In the meantime, if you're an individual investor, this is providing particularly high APRs in the sort of, at, at the moment, projected up to 500%, uh, could get as low as 350 to 400%, depending on how much more TVL comes in. Beyond that, you'll see a number of different pools here. One of the more, uh, you might say, like adult type pools is what's going on with uh, Wrapped ETH and uh, the Lido tokens down here. Uh, some of these sort of you know, much larger tokens with much larger pools who are seeking to capture a lot of value in those. So, the, you know, the, as I said previously, so the State ETH stable pool, uh, and you know, 97.191, uh, I should say, a million dollars currently locked. Same again for the stable coin pools here. So you can get some pretty good yields on um, some fairly standard, uh, standard options. So for those of you who are seeking to actually deposit in these particular things, let's just use as an example now, if you had uh, USDC PAL, you might click on this, you can go to deposit, and you can either deposit directly to USDC, if you have that in your wallet, you can deposit Paladin, if you have that in your wallet, or alternatively, if you've already gone to Balancer, you can click on this and then mint one of these BPTs, these Balancer pool tokens. You do not click stake and deposit on Balancer, you simply create it, and then you bring it across here and stake it. Once you've done that, you can go across the claim and you can track how much claimable you've actually got in a particular pool. So again, all very interesting stuff. Importantly, one of the things you're actually getting here is, um, is your Aura token. The Aura token itself is what controls, uh, basically as a governance layer on top of a governance layer. It controls where all these socially aggregated votes work. Now, I know I've jumped over this a little bit, but just to make it clear, VBAL, which we talked about here in Balancer, so this is that 80-20 Balancer uh, wrapped ETH pool. VBAL can be brought across here to Aura and then basically swapped in a one way swap to Aura Bell. What this does is permanently provides this, uh, those VBAL tokens across to Aura, who lock it at the max possible uh, duration, essentially, and then can use that constantly uh, for voting to get the best possible rewards. What you get as an individual is you're hoping that the Aura Bell remains pegged to VBAL value, so you can always trade it if you need. 
And that's why there's so many pools. Uh, you can see like this one here, for example, the Aurobel Stable Pool, which enables you to trade between those two assets. And they've incentivized that quite heavily uh, to make sure you can always do that. So interesting stuff. Clearly, the most important thing for Aura is to continue to amass uh, these balancer tokens, so this VBAL. And you'll note at the moment, they have 28.09% of all VBAL that's currently minted on the market. So quite a high percentage of the, of the VBAL. What's also interesting is how rewards are being allocated. So as a result of some of the latest AIPs, so that's Aura Improvement Proposals, they've essentially uh, increased the bribe amounts across and increased uh, returns, in particular to Aura Bell and increased uh, the overall APRs. This is important because although it's good to incentivize people to buy and hold Aura token, which is important, the long-term health of the protocol is basically focused on how much Aura bowel they can actually get into the system. So you can expect these APRs to change up a little bit as incentives are sort of moved around to really incentivize the locking of more Aura bowel and the minting of more Aura bowel to make sure that, you know, essentially this balance of governance is amassed into Aura. So interesting stuff. So if you go through some of the proposals, you can see all of these. Uh, most of these are not particularly interesting uh, in terms of, uh, you know, those who want to really uh, uh, get into, I suppose, the, the juicy part. But if you look at, this is how voting is actually done. Uh, excuse me, I just connect my profile here. Uh, if you go through here, you can have a look at the different uh, pools. And these are all the pools you saw before. So if you were to go across to Hidden Hand, here, Hidden Hand is actually who's managing this. You've got the balancer tokens and you can have a look at voting with balancer and you can go across to Aura as well. If you want to vote directly yourself, you've got two options. If you leave it locked here on Aura, you go across to the Aura piece here, you lock your Aura, you're then able to vote. You'll go across here to these different gauges and or click on uh, vote. Essentially, it takes you to the same page and then you can go through and vote like you know 100% or less or whatever you want to put in into each of these different votes. Hidden Hand will then tell you based on what's currently here. So the total rewards, so this is the bribe amount and how much you can expect to get per locked aura. All right. So at the moment you're looking at around about, uh, you know, for cow token or fiat die, et cetera, these are additional bribes provided by the protocols to get your vote. You're looking at about five cents uh, per aura token. Uh, but what you can expect is that the aura wrapped ETH uh, piece due to those initial incentives I was talking about that have just come out, you can expect a significantly more there and significantly more to come in in the next few hours on the aura valve pool. So these will likely get up to you know, maybe eight, nine cents, maybe up as high as 10 cents, depending on how things play out. If you're not interested in using or voting each week, what you can do is simply delegate across to Hidden Hand and they'll essentially seek to get the best possible bribes for you. Noting, of course, that it's not tailored to you. So if you have a specific pool you want to see incentivized because you're providing LP, it won't do that, but it will give you the best possible returns. All you'll then do is click on claim and it'll come across and tell you uh, in particular what you've got itself. So lots of great stuff going on there. There's two other parts I want to talk to you really quickly before we uh, finish up the video. The first is some partnerships. BadgerDAO is currently uh, one of the larger holders of Balancer tokens. And importantly, they've already started to build out some of the infrastructure to support uh, their positions. First is this Graviora token. Uh, Graviora is essentially a gravity bound aura and its focus there is to build out ecosystems that support the DAO, uh, not only Badger DAO, but any DAO who's seeking to get involved in Balancer. And essentially what it does is you pair your token in a pool with Graviora, much like you saw in these pools, uh, such as, sorry, much like you saw in this pool. So you can see 20 Graviora here, same down here, you've got 33 Graviora. And essentially what that Graviora will do is auto vote all of its aura vote weight directly into the pool that it's already in. So it means there's none of that bribe requirement, although that might still be something you do. Uh, it means it auto votes on the pool itself. So it's providing additional incentives for any LPs you've got. So Graviora is a token you can mint, uh, essentially you swap for, I should say, directly on the balancer, sorry, the Badger app. And this is something that's being built out. Uh, Badger has also discussed how they're building out a number of other vaults um, of interest. So you will be able to, for example, stake your uh, DIG uh, WBTC Graviora position, the one we looked at before, along with your Badger positions, stake those here on the protocol uh, page, on the app page, I should say, and then get your boosted rewards. So that builds into the, uh, the Badger flywheel uh, for those who are familiar with Badger. And there's a number of videos out there. One of the other important parts in particular about the long-term health of Aura uh, is getting more DAOs involved. And there's two things currently going on. The first is there's ongoing relationships, uh, I think between, in this instance, uh, some of the team members and or devs between Olympus DAO and, uh, and Aura Finance. This is not to presuppose anything, but there's certainly a lot of forum discussions between the two. What we can expect to see in the next little while is someone like uh, Olympus DAO or potentially a different uh, group, essentially seeking to 
either create some type of token swap or some other easy way of buying into Aura to get a significant position. Other larger DAOs in particular are currently quite nervous about how their ability to get into Aura, uh, in particular because of the lower current liquidity of the actual tokens out there themselves. They're concerned about seriously pumping the price as they seek to acquire further Aura tokens. So treasury swap seems to be the way. With that said, and this is the last piece to talk to today, there's currently a sort of a, uh, what do you call it? I'm trying to remember the name of this thing, but it's basically an opportunity for DAOs to buy at certain prices. The lowest price that these uh, sort of, well, it's almost like an OTC trade, really. The, the, the lowest amount this can get to is $2.50, but the idea being that um, essentially you can buy in tranches or chunks of, uh, of Aura tokens out of the 5 10 or 15% above the current marketing price with the lowest possible value at $2.50. With no major surprise, Aura now has been sort of pushed down to approximately 250. Now, I don't know if that's because individuals think they can buy it or some DAOs already own a lot and they want to put the, the price down to 250 so they can accumulate more. Who knows? Uh, but essentially what this means is uh, Aura is seeking to provide more Aura tokens to the market and in particular, put them in the hands of important and influential DAOs. So it's not just Badger DAO, it includes others to really build out the health of the ecosystem and to continue to incentivize a whole bunch of different pools. Of particular note, what Aura wants to do is to continue to dilute essentially the large whale, who at the moment, as I mentioned previously, continues to vote with 30% of the overall, uh, well, I don't think he owns this much, or he or she, I should say, but continues to vote with a significant percentage of overall votes for this single pool, which has quite a small uh, sort of overall TVL. So this pool has a lot of potential to do a lot of great things, uh, but at the moment, the better health of the overall ecosystem uh, will be built out as more and more Aura Bell is locked into Aura and more and more people lock their balance into VBAL. So that's the type of stuff that both, uh, uh, really that every everybody's looking to do uh, to build out the overall health of the ecosystem and to continue to see Aura Finance develop and grow. Anyway, if you have any questions or if this wasn't clear, let me know. But uh, otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.